wanted to talk a little bit about abstraction and what that means, particularly as we move more into the biomorphic abstraction carving. Biomorphic refers to working with the natural world. So instead of geometric forms as we carve, we're going to be doing organically, organic looking forms. Think like bones, joints, coral, things like that, as opposed to just blocks. You've already got a block, you need to carve it into something that's more fluid, particularly since we're going to be covering it with paper mache. I wanted to talk a little bit about what abstraction means. In the text, it talks about how abstraction is a simplification of the observable world. If we look at this first image of a tree, we can see there's a trunk, there's branches on the branches on the left hand side, and we can see what we look like leaf structures or leaf clumps on the tree. It looks pretty naturalistic. Behind it to the right, a little bit to the left, we can see shapes behind that our eye or mind reads as trees as seen through morning mist. But I'd say that this is a pretty naturalistic image of a tree. Here's another good example of that. When we see the three trees on the, the left hand side, we see a couple trees in the middle, we see what looks like maybe bushes or a stunted tree on the right hand side, lots of trees in the background, mountains receding into the back as they um, turning blue with the density of air between us and the mountains. But we can still see this as a very realistic depiction of trees. Here we start moving through towards abstraction through the ideal of stylization. This is from the Persian miniature style painting. I believe that this particular example might be Turkish. But what we can see, we read this as a tree because we recognize the trunk, we recognize leaves, we recognize flowers. But in the real world, in the naturally occurring world, we are not going to see trees with such perfectly organized limbs, perhaps. We will not see leaves that are all full frontal. We probably are not going to see all birds that are all facing the same way at the same time, necessarily, on perfect profile. Well, these two birds on the lower right, their bodies are in profile one direction, and their heads are facing another way. But this is a very stylized tree. We can see, though, that the abstraction idea is coming out because there are some uh, simplifications. You know, natural world leaves are not going to only have two colors to them. Like I said, they're not going to be all uh, that full frontal view. But uh, we can still read this as a tree because of those indicators, leaves, trunks, things like that, that we're familiar with. Here we're getting more towards the abstracted. See how much they've simplified the tree here? This is the state flag of New Hampshire. The tree first is one solid color, which rarely happens in nature. And we can see that this silhouette is very much the uh, simplified image of a tree. We have the root ball at the bottom. We have the trunk. We have basically triangular canopy. But you can see that this is stylized. It's also abstracted because it's simplified. We go here, this is kanji for tree. It's very stylized and it is abstracted to the point where if we didn't know the context, we almost wouldn't be able to tell what it is. So we have this vertical line here that represents a trunk. We have the leaf canopy on the left hand side. This is diagonal line. The leaf canopy on the right hand side is this diagonal line. And this horizontal line is either going to be the horizon or maybe the bottom of the leaf canopy. But once we know the context, we can tell that this is a tree because it is very simplified. It's also very abstracted, but because of the context, like I said, we can know it's a tree. Here, the trees are abstracted to the point where they become almost just fields of color. We have these vertical strokes here, just right of center and on the right-hand edge of the painting. To me, they kind of read like poplar trees. We have a little bit of dark paint at the bottom of these strokes that maybe could be read as trunks, but the reason we can read these as trees is because primarily the color, maybe the overall shape, but it's not very realistic. And you can see how much they've simplified the idea of the tree in this painting. Now, the next guy I want to, or the artist I want to talk about, is a guy named Pete Mondrian. Everybody's familiar with this kind of stylization. Would you believe me that this is actually a landscape? He lived at a time where the world was going faster 
and moving, everybody was moving faster than they had previous generations for hundreds of years. You could go all the way around the world and back to your starting point in less than two months. You could get a message from one place to anywhere else in the world in less than a month. And people were crowding into cities where uh, there was just an immense density of population. And I believe that P. Mondrian, one of his reactions to this was to start representing the natural world using very geometric shapes, simplifying the lines, so getting rid of diagonals and simplifying them to just horizontal and vertical lines, and simplifying all the color to either white or one of the primary colors. And I wanted to show just the growth of his painting to his recognizable style from his earlier work. When he first started, he was an Impressionist. And we can tell that this is very much an Impressionist tree. It's stylized, it is a bit abstracted, but you can still easily read that it as a tree. We go to the middle of the top, we can see that the tree is simplified even more. He's still using these kind of diagonal and curving lines. You can still feel the treeness of that in there where we have this trunk and then we have these branches and we kind of feel the horizon, right? Or the ground line right there. We go to the top right, he simplified it even more. We see a lot of these curves and there's some horizontal lines, some vertical lines working in, but you can see him working from that more natural looking tree that he did in Impressionist style towards this more familiar geometric work. The bottom left is the next step in this evolution. We see this, the tree is abstracted to the point where the vertical and horizontal lines almost remind us of the map or the the roads of a city as seen from the air. The middle of the bottom row, we can see that the tree has been simplified even more. There's fewer horizontal and vertical lines, fewer colors, but we're getting to the point where it's almost impossible to tell that there's a tree there, even when you know the context. On the bottom right, can anybody see the tree in this? Here he's parsed it down to the most basic of shapes, rectangles, and the only a hor few horizontal and vertical lines compared to the other two on that bottom row. Maybe this black square left of center at the bottom is a trunk. Maybe this red square above it is where the sunlight is hitting the trunk. Maybe this top right yellow is where the sunlight is bouncing off the branches. I don't know exactly, except that this is a very abstracted tree. So keep that in mind as you move forward. Abstraction doesn't uh, begins from the observable world, like bones and things like that, but it doesn't have to be anything necessarily. You can take elements that you appreciate seeing, simplify them until they're forms you're comfortable and happy with, and then put them together. So this carving, we're not going to want to make a portrait of a dog. We're not going to want to make something that's identifiable. What we're doing is playing with the idea of that biomorphic form as an abstracted shape, some, a shape that you have simplified.